show today we're going to be taking a look at this absolutely stunningly gorgeous Lange here. Uh, it's a time zone Lange as well. But before I get into that, I'll do my quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing my beloved Tudor Submariner on a mil spec uh, Phoenix one piece because I've cut the underside. I have vowed to have something German in the collection, uh, my personal collection that is. And recently I sold my Zin 109. Now this is dramatically different, obviously, and of course, a completely different price range. I have actually already reviewed this for Watchbox for their Instagram TV, but I wanted to do a kind of director's uncut version, a little bit more in depth, uh, my positives, my, my negatives, loves, loathes, and a little bit more uh, background on just why this is such an incredible watch. So without further ado, let's recap the history of the brand in case you missed my numerous uh, videos on Lange. Founded in 1845 and then relaunched in 1990, thanks to Richemont, this world-renowned premier watch brand hails from the watchmaking heartland of Glashütte, the birthplace of the German watchmaking industry. Aside from being the choice of numerous royal patrons through history, Lange has prided itself on its ultra-traditional Glashütte style that incidentally is far closer to the classic British aesthetic rather than that of the Swiss. But do not let the tasteful, strained classicism fool you. Their list of innovations is just as impressive. Aside from mastering many grand complications in the 1900s through the 90s during their comeback to the Premier League, so to speak, included such wonders as the zero reset mechanism of 1997 we previously discussed, or the triple split chronograph in 2018, the stop seconds for the tourbillon in 2008, among many other achievements. The latter of which is perhaps my favourite, Lange being the only brand to find a way to stop the oscillating balance inside a revolving tourbillon cage, thus allowing the precise time setting in a watch endowed with this uh, amazing complication. But we are merely scratching the surface of Lange's illustrious legacy. So why is it so important for me to have uh, a German watch in the collection? Well, it's twofold. First of all, I am actually part German. I have some German uh, ancestry in me, uh, but that's not actually the main reason. The second reason is because, and, and this gets overlooked so many times, that the German contribution to the history of, of horology is invaluable. It was in fact a German, Peter Heinlein, who was the first inventor. I think it was in 1505 or something like that. So forgive me if I'm wrong, um, way back in the day, who invented the first portable uh, pocket watch. The farmers of the Valley de Jour that turned into later uh, watchmakers famously during the long winters in Switzerland, hadn't started even tinkering about, they hadn't even thought of it yet. So the Germans were very much ahead of their time. Today, we are looking at the Lange and Zone, Lange 1 time zone. This is the reference uh, 116025. Debuting in the mid 2000s, this is the solid platinum version that gives it a wonderfully reassuring heft. Platinum, of course, being heavier. The weight comes out to 153 grams. The case is very much based on the multi-award winning Grand Lange 1 that had the same proportions, but of course here we have added new complications. We are looking at a diameter of 41.9 millimeters, a cuff-friendly 11.6 millimeters in thickness, and a modern 50 millimeters lug-to-lug. The lug width is a pleasing 22 millimeters, making it a joy to match straps with. This is further assisted by it being able to match color-wise with virtually any pattern or style. Well, um, almost, perhaps skip the rubber and NATO straps 
this time. It comes on a very plain, but deliberately so, as not to detract too much attention away from the main uh, attraction here, an alligator pattern black leather strap with a calf skin softer interior for extra comfort. It actually wears more like a sports watch rather than a dress watch due to its 21st century size. But this will not alienate many and undoubtedly will please the majority. To fasten it, we have a matching uh, platinum signed buckle with the extra bar. Uh, this is um, in case you have the smaller wrist so you can actually fold the extra strap into it. A very handy feature. The case design is unquestionably concurrent in style with exaggerated uh, contrasting finishes of satin finish there with the high polish that is quintessentially Lange. Also notice the subtle indentation where the lugs meet the case to further accentuate this point. The dial is a masterpiece of proportion and scale, done in an almost entirely monochromatic theme of grey and silver, with just small dashes of blue and white that in no way disrupt its cohesive elegance. This is then complemented by the anti-reflective blue coating that gives the sapphire glass a slight tint in certain lights. The color gray itself changes from a rich metallic fossil to a cloudy coin gray in various lighting. The relatively contemporary case is nicely juxtaposed by the traditional customized typography based on the famous engraver's font from 1899. And the Lance style hands throughout harken back to the turn of the century. This pleasing relationship of smaller and then larger dials, circular shapes and their placement would make Fibonacci proud. This not only gives the watch its identity as a Lange, but sets it apart from others with its charm. At the periphery, we see 24 cities on an outer ring and their respective time zones, working in conjunction with the smaller two-handed dial at the four o'clock. That time zone is then indicated via an applied arrow pointing at the desired location, the main time being displayed on the larger of the two subsidiary dials that is completed with its own small seconds at its six o'clock, with that little flash of blue via the thermally heated hand. To differentiate them further aside from size, the larger of the two dials has a more classic applied Roman numerals at the 12, 3 and 9, with little diamond markers in between, while the smaller second time zone has black printing in Arabic numerals. The appointed second time zone is then selected or rather changed via this lower left rectangular pusher at the eight o'clock. When pressed, this then rotates the second time zone and you can see the hour hand of that smaller dial advancing in one hour increments as you select the time zone. So right now, for example, we are on Bangkok time. We press it again, and again, we switch from Hong Kong and now we are in Tokyo. And then this, of course, would be your selected home time. This functional, practical, and very easy to understand at a quick glance way of showing multiple time zones is highly effective. And to give further clarity on each time zone, both of these smaller subsidiary dials have assigned indicators, giving a simple but highly functional way of indicating day and night via a semi-blue circle rotating disc. Something I noticed when I reviewed, if you recall, the, the, the video review of the um, Patek World Time with that stunning cloisonné dial, it wasn't actually very efficient. And while I'm not diminishing any of the uh, extremely renowned horologist's work, uh, Louis Coutier, while I don't want to diminish his achievements, it's not the most practical. With having two dials like this, it very much reminds me of my flighty. At a quick glance, it's extremely practical. You just look at it and it can instantly tell within a split second the time in these designated time zones. Very handy, very practical, very straightforward.
balancing the placement of these two dials is of course the power reserve indicator at the center right and above it the iconic oversized double window framed date display at the top right. As mentioned before in my previous Lange videos, this was inspired by the clock inside the Semper Opera House of Dresden. A charming way of referencing the rich cultural sophistication of Germany. And if you are a opera fan like me, it's a wonderful and enthralling touch. And it is this date display where the second of the two pushers equidistantly placed at the, I would say, 10 o'clock position comes into play. Once pressed, it advances the date. Then at the three o'clock, we have your conventional uh, signed crown. This allows you to set the time and of course, wind the watch. It's also notable to mention that this is a hackable movement as well, allowing precise synchronization with a reference time. Under that ever so slightly curved sapphire glass and surrounded by a smooth cuff loving bezel is the rhodium dial in a matte opaline-esque finish that is very much in keeping with the understated Germanic style. It has only the gleaming of the high polished white gold applied details and the hands that give it a slight but lovable twinkle and luster. The only break away from the blue, silver, white, and then finally black of the strap and uh, text is that little GMT on that rotating disc. Not flashy or loud, this is all about a more profound sense of refined luxury rather than status symbolism, with no need to over announce its presence. I love the fact that this evokes not just the classicism of German watchmaking, but English watchmaking too. One of my biggest heroes is Thomas Mudge, the famous English watchmaker who invented the lever escapement, something we certainly all take for granted now. But he actually made very similar looking in aesthetic to this uh, marine chronometers in the golden age of that quest for, for the, uh, the pinnacle of marine chronometry. Some of them always had this, this kind of uh, smaller subdial look. So this culmination of both ancestries from um, England and Germany really does speak to me. And this uh, floral engravings on the back, one can only think of pocket watches. If we turn it around and admire the movement via the display case back, we'll immediately notice the uniqueness continues with a distinctive double hand engravings of the caliber L031. This splendid manual wind movement not only was manufactured to the highest standards completely in house, like all their movements, but also has the distinction of being designed specially for this particular watch. This has 54 joules and operating at 21,600 vibrations an hour, a shock resistant screw balance, a Niverox balance spring, a whiplash precision index adjuster with a patented beat adjust mechanism. And despite its beautiful pocket watch like aesthetic, it's actually a tough cookie as well with ultra modern uh, use of materials and performance, along with an extremely impressive power reserve of 72 hours. This is achieved by uh, twin barrels. Lange's movement design and decoration is again distinctly German too, in appearance with the uh, glass hute uh, stripes here, along with your typical three quarter style bridge and hand engraved balance cock and a swan neck regulator. In addition to this, we have chamfering, circular graining, contour grinding, satin brushed wheels with curved spokes that very much suggest the motion that they rotate in, mirror polish, linear finish, collage, glass hute ribbing, sunray finishes, blued screws, and of course, black polished screws as well. The movement itself is comprised of a staggering 417 components. The movements are made mostly from a metal known as German silver, as opposed to the plated brass typically found in uh, your Swiss movements. 
It requires extra care and attention during production by the watchmaker, but the result is far more refined, with an almost gold-like luster, further evoking the rich heritage of the pocket watches that very much made the brand as highly regarded as it is. Okay, so I have two big negatives with this watch. The first thing is, of course, the size. Now, if you recall in my very, very early videos, I went to Harrods and I uh, experienced my first Lange. It was the Langmatic. And that was 38 millimeters, perfect for me. Had this have been 38 millimeters in diameter, it would unquestionably, well, I'd be in <laughs> a lot of trouble, but it would be certainly high up there on my grail, um, to buy list, so to speak. If Lange can do an automatic perpetual calendar in 38 millimeter size, why not a time zone watch? My second biggest issue has to be the 30 meters water resistance. While it's totally understandable because of course we have the two pushers and a crown, brings me back to Rolexes and why we love Rolex so much. Uh, the Oyster cases, of course. While it wears like a sports watch, it hasn't got that versatility. It's not the end of the world, completely forgivable considering the type of watch it is. But if you have the wrists for it, well, I'm very, very jealous. And secondly, you should definitely go for it. So in conclusion, what makes it ultimately compelling is the practicality of these complications. These are especially useful for a suave jet setter or for those with business and family abroad they wish to keep track of. Its restrained looks gives it a dignity few other watches achieve and becomes immediately apparent once felt in hand or on the wrist just how beautifully made it is. This is because of the premium level of decoration and quality of manufacturing when it comes to the highest horology luxury standards that Germany can afford to offer. With its inspiration from German culture, art, history, horology and design, but brought together in such a flawless blend, this watch has a natural nobility and purity that makes it simply magnificent and the epitome of good taste, which is also timeless in my opinion. Anyway guys, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Now, before I go, guys, I just want to quickly tell you about this extremely cool app that Watchbox have launched. This is my own personal go-to app for everything watch-related. Using the app, you can keep track of the real-time value of your watch collection. You can store watches in your digital watch box and even try on watches using an augmented reality. So don't miss out and please go to the App Store and download it today. You can access all of my latest videos right there in the app itself. And if you haven't already, please follow me on the official Urban Gentry Instagram and of course the Facebook UGWC. But most importantly of all, keep it positive onwards and upwards.